So I said that typically I taught this and I would step through slides explaining every single one so that someone could read it later. But thanks to the video format of this class, now I can just save myself all that work of writing out all those slides and we'll do it live. So here we are over in journey to the center of memcopy.c. So to get this show on the road, we need to have a breakpoint at the entry point of main, and we want to step into memcopy. So let's go ahead and start the debugger. Over to the disassembly view, and let's step into, step into, step into, until we step into the memcopy. Now, you should expect, just based on what the source code is, that RCX, which is the first argument, is going to be the address of B. And you can see in this mode where we have the symbol names on that that's the address of B and this is the address of A. So that's fine. You can go ahead and see the symbol names. A little extra help never hurt. And R8, the third argument, is going to be H. That's the current size of our struct. So let's step into and there's some jump to memcopy, sure, whatever. All right, and now we are at the memcopy assembly. So I'm going to start writing down a little bit of notes and pseudocode in order to help me remember what's going on here. So first of all, rcx into r11. So r11 equals rcx, and what is rcx? It's the first argument to memcopy. So that is going to be the address of B, our destination. Then we have rdx into r10, so r10 equals rdx equals the address of A, our source. And then you see a comparison of r8 to r10. Well, maybe a little preface here that it was r8 which got the length in the memcopy call. So an immediate check of is r8 below or equal 10, hex 10. So what would that look like in pseudocode? That would be something like if r8, which is lang, is less than or equal to, below or equal. So what is below? Below is the unsigned notion. So is it below hex 10? And if so, go to this particular address. All right, so let's see if that's going to be taken. Boop, boop, boop. And we know from R8 is eight because our size of our struct is eight. So eight is less than 10. So we know that that's going to be taken. Step into, and there we go. We're now at that address. So let's go ahead and write out what is at that address. So we have move RCX into R ax and let's just go ahead and call it like it is the address of b our destination next we have lea of some random memory address into r9 so that's literally just going to take this exact value and put it into r9 and we can confirm that by stepping over it in the assembly Step, step, and R9 is indeed 7FFB7649000, 7FFB7690000. All right, next we have R9, which is that number, plus R8, which is our size, times 4, plus 27,000. Don't know what's up with that, but whatever. Let's just see what gets plucked out of memory there and put into ECX. Step ECX RCX gets this value. So let's just go ahead and note that down. And then it adds R9. R9 has this value, which we wrote right there. So basically, RCX is getting a plus equals of that value. And then what does it do with it? It actually uses it as a 
address to jump to. So this is the jump indirect. So it's just calculating an address and then it's jumping to that location. So that is a new address. We're gonna find out what's at that address. So basically it's just doing go to RCX, which is that. Let's put that down and say, what is the code there? Step into, and what do we have? We have a move quad word from RDX. Well, what is RDX at this point? Do, 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 do. RDX is still the address of A, so it's plucking eight bytes, keyword pointer, plucking eight bytes out of the source and putting it into RCX. What does it do next? It takes that eight bytes and it puts it into the memory specified by RAX. What is RAX? Do, 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 do. RAX is RCX is the address of B. So it's plucking eight bytes out of the source and writing eight bytes to the destination using two move instructions. And it can do that because R8, which is our length, was eight bytes. So that is doing the mem copy. Do, 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 and we're done. We're done with the mem copy, yay except we didn't find the elusive rep move s, which we're searching for. So that's no good. We need to try, try again. So based on this pseudocode we have right now, the most interesting bit, the only sort of conditional control flow bit that we ran into is this check of if the length is less than or equal to 10 and go here. So we want to not go there. So we need to make sure that the length is greater than hex 10. So we can easily do that by sticking in x10 in this variable two, and now hex10 plus four for the int will be definitely greater than hex10. So let's start it all over again. Boo diagnostics. All right, disassembly. Step, 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 step into the breach. Step, step, step. All right, now this time R8 is hex 20, sorry, decimal 20, which is greater than hex 10. So it's not going to take the jump, boom. But then we have an immediate compare of R8 against hex 20. So 20 to hex, sorry, hex, sorry, decimal 20 to decimal 32 and jump if below or equal. Well, that's definitely below or equal. So let's update our pseudocode. If you don't take the jump, then R8, which is your length, and now our length is hex 14. If the length is less than or equal to hex 20, then where is it going to go? It's going to go right there. So because that's the value right now, it will take that jump. And where does it land? A bunch of move ups with XMMO registers and XMM word pointers. And that's scary, so we're just gonna escape. Ah, uh, okay, there we go. I just stepped and I eventually stepped out of the mem copy. Well, the main point there is that we did not see rep move s on that path. And so we gotta try, try again. So I'll update my pseudocode a little bit before I do that, just to say that at this particular address, that was, so this first path was to move instructions, copying eight bytes, and then returning. And this path is some um, move s, move ups, instructions which are scary and ret. So once again, we have a situation where the only conditional control flow was the hex 10 check, which we bypassed by increasing the size. Now there's a hex 20 check and we should probably bypass that by increasing the size. So hex 20, let's go. Disassembly. Step, 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 step. Now our R8 is hex 24. So we're going to step, 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 step until we get to this compare against hex 20. We are greater than hex 20 now. 
Hold on a sec. Let's get this into hex view. Hexadecimal display, much better. All right, so now it is not going to take this jump below or equal, so it's going to fall through. So let's go ahead and fall through and let's get a sense of what's coming up next. So it didn't take the jump below. Now we fall through. Let's pseudocode out what happens if we fall through. So it's going to take RDX and subtract RCX from it and stick the value back into RDX. Well, what is RDX at this point? RDX is the source. So it's basically RD, RDX equals RDX minus RCX, which basically means, which basically means take the source address and subtract the destination address. Okay, it does that subtract, but then there's an immediate jump above or equal. So it's kind of like that's being used as a compare, except that they are actually still storing the result of that comparison back into RDX. So jump above or equal, is this going to be taken? Well, the way we would interpret that is, is this greater than or equal to RCX? So let's look at the registers quick. RDX 14FDB0 and RCX 14FDD8. So is this greater than this? The answer is no. This one ends in B0, this one ends in D0. So CX is greater than DX. So we don't expect this jump to actually be taken. So, do, so we're going to put in our Conditional control flow, we're going to say, well, they're going to use this for if RDX, or let's just put, yeah, if RDX, which is the source, is above or equal RCX, which is the dest, then it's going to go to here, but it is not going to actually take that jump this time because it is not. So let's keep stepping. Didn't take the jump. Now we have an LEA. So what's going on with the LEA? It is doing R8 plus R10 and it's putting it into RAX. Well, what is R8? R8 is our length. R10 is our source. It's basically going to say RAX equals R10 plus source plus R8, which is length. But it's basically the address of that. Right? This is basically an address. This is basically a size. And so it's going to get a new address, which is basically the end of the source buffer. So end of the source buffer. All right, and what's next? It's going to compare RCX to RAX. So compare is if RCX is below, so if RCX is strictly below RAX, then it's going to take this jump. So let's do a little bit of interpretation of this stuff that we're seeing so far. Let's add some curly braces. So let's look at this sort of nested if condition that we have. So we have if source is greater than or equal to dest. That implies that the else is if, if source is less than dest. And then what is this? RAX was this end of source buffer and RCX is equal to the dest. So this is basically if dust is less than source plus 
length. And because this if is nested inside of this if, the way that you actually get to this go to is if source is less than dest and dest is less than source plus length. Uh, what is it doing? There we go. So you go here if essentially your destination is overlapping with your source. So destination is greater than source, but it's less than source plus length. And that means the place that you're mem copying into is going to be a place that is within the source buffer. So that could potentially be a problem, but let's see whether it actually takes that jump here. So compare, jump below, and it did not take that jump. So it just fell through to this next thing, compare R8 to hex 80. So great, we didn't do any of that. So let's just go out here and say, if R8 less than hex 80. Now, why am I putting it out here? Well, because it turns out that if you look back at the actual addresses here, this jump above right here actually transfers down to here. So this is a little nested condition inside of here. And if this condition doesn't hold, then you just kind of jump over this extra check. So, you know, probably the better place to put it would be right here. So I guess I'll just put it there for now. All right, compare against hex 80. Well, we know that we're not greater than hex 80. So is it gonna take this below? You betcha. All right, take the jump and ah, some more move ups. Let's get out of here. Step, step, let's step until the return. Head for the exit. Uh, there we go. We're out. We're safe. Well, this again suggests that we need to do something that's length greater than hex 80. So let's go ahead and put that down here somewhere. 49, 15, 30, 49, 13, 30. Yep. So let's Nope down, that's on that path. Let's bump the size to hex 80. And once more. Step, 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 step. And now we know that we are greater than hex 80, so this below or equal is not going to be taken. So it'll just fall through to the next stuff. So test, all right. So if this, go there, else, stuff. So it's doing some sort of test of a byte pointer against two. Well, let's check what's at that byte pointer, paste that in, and it looks like the memory at that address is actually two, and it's a byte pointer, so we may as well display it one byte at a time. So it's gonna pluck memory out of that value, and it's gonna test it against two. Now test, we said, is an and instruction that throws away the results. So the way we might interpret this, and there's a jump equal immediately after. So. It's an and with a jump equal. So if some value equals zero, then it's going to take the jump. And what is that value? Well, that value is this byte pointer ended with two. So I might say that this is the dereferencing of a byte pointer, char star, not a car, char. 
char star of this value dereferenced. So get to memory, grab that value out. It's grabbing a byte because it's a char star. And then bitwise and it with two. And so if the result of that bitwise and is equal to zero, then it's going to take the jump. And if not, it's going to go somewhere else. You can see there's a hard coded jump if it doesn't take that. So if else. And we looked at memory, so we know that it the, the value there is 2. So the result is not going to be 0. The result of this operation is not going to be 0. So it's not going to take that. It's going to take this. My wife doesn't like it when I don't put spaces after my comments. All right, skipped over the jump equal, take the jump, and where do we land? Do, 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 do. Rep move us. Here it is, folks. This is what we've been searching for. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that out. And we will take a look at what's up with that after we learn more about this instruction.